All right. Good evening. Um, I realize you probably at some point today found out that we would be virtual for the last couple of days of the semester. So I wanted to give you an idea of what you were supposed to do on the assignment that I posted. Um, and also um, go through a couple of slides of notes over the information. Um, so we're going to do a really short unit on imperialism. And um, basically all you need to do is if you look at the, um, the Google Doc, um, there are six events that are covered on the Google Doc. And each event is an example of U.S. imperialism, which we'll talk about what that means in a second. What you need to do is after you have listened to that particular short lecture over that event, uh, you need to answer the question of was U.S. imperialism justified? In other words, was the United States right to do what it did? And you have a rating of one through 10, one being no, the United States was absolutely not right. 10 being they absolutely were right. And so you just give it a rating and then you use evidence from either the notes that you take in class over these video lectures, or you can look up information online if that is something you'd rather do. Um, there's no wrong answers on the ratings. As long as you have evidence to support your opinion, you're in good shape. Um, so what I'll be doing is after this video, I'll make videos over each of the um, of the different terms um, or the different events. And uh, so you can watch the short videos and, and fill in that Google Doc um, as you go. And obviously, if you have questions, feel free to email me. So to get things started here, the first uh, couple of things you want to write down is what is imperialism? And I put the definition on the slide. Imperialism is when one country extends control over another. We see this all the time uh, in, around the world, not just from the United States, but um, countries that are more powerful, more wealthy, um, they tend to be able to influence countries that are less powerful and less wealthy. And it has been this way since the beginning of time. Now, that doesn't always make it right. Sometimes countries use their wealth or their military to um, extend control over another country in a way that maybe is unfair um, or in a way that maybe hurts the people of that country that they're taking over. Um, so we're going to look at a couple of examples of types of imperialism that you'll also want to write down. Uh, the first type of imperialism is economic imperialism. This is when a country uses its wealth to bully another country into doing what it wants. Uh, sometimes this is called dollar diplomacy. Um, I'll give you an example of when this might be the case. Uh, let's say that uh, there is a country in Central America um, that's a very poor country, um, but they have something in particular that the United States wants. Like, let's use the country of Panama as an example. They have a nice canal in Panama that the United States likes to use. Um, and so an example of economic pressure that the United States might use in Panama is, let's say, hypothetically, um, somebody gets elected in Panama that is not a fan of the United States. And that person is threatening to not allow the United States or anybody to use the Panama Canal for that matter. Um, that is well within their rights. It's their canal. They can say that if they want to. However, um, the United States might approach that particular leader of Panama and say, look, we really want to use this canal. How's this sound? How about we um, invest $30 million in the um, development of several businesses in Panama? Um, we improve the healthcare system in Panama. Um, we help you guys. Um, maybe we fund some of the military in Panama. Either way, we're offering a lot of money uh, to Panama just to improve the quality of life of the people in Panama. If you're the leader of the country of Panama, um, that is an offer you literally can't refuse. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and saying, look, we're going to war if, if you don't accept this. Um, but it's that type of economic pressure that, the, that countries like the United States can put on other smaller, less fortunate countries. Um, we'll make them an offer they literally can't refuse. 
we're out of 30 million bucks, which is chump change to the United States. Uh, and we get to use the Panama Canal. So everybody's a winner. Military pressure would look like if that leader of Panama said, uh, no, I'm, I'm not going to accept the aid and you're not going to use the canal. Um, and we might just take a really large boat down to Panama and say, okay, um, there's a lot of guns on this boat and there are a lot of soldiers on this boat. Are you sure you don't want to let us use the canal? Um, and um, so that would be an example of military pressure, obviously. Sometimes you don't even have to like fight a war. Just the threat of military action is enough to um, have countries do what you want. So anyway, there's several types of imperialism listed there, and you need to be familiar with both because what you'll see uh, in this assignment is that there's multiple examples of each. So first example, and the one that uh, you'll want to jot down some notes over this in your notes section, um, the United States Purchase of Alaska. So in 1867, Civil War had just ended, um, and the Secretary of State um, named William Seward, he decided that it might be a good idea to buy Alaska from Russia. Um, the whole idea was, you know what, like, let's establish a U.S. presence in the Pacific Northwest. As you can see on the map there, Alaska is highlighted in orange. Um, and people thought he was crazy. Um, the reason why people thought he was crazy is because Alaska was literally just seen as this large frozen piece of land. It wasn't until many years later that gold was discovered um, or eventually oil is discovered in Alaska. So at the time, it really seemed like there was no real advantage to it acquiring Alaska. It seemed like a big waste of money. Um, but we did it anyway, and obviously it ultimately ended up paying off. We have Alaska as one of our 50 states. Um, but again, as far as should the United States have purchased Alaska, whenever you're giving it your rating, some things that you'll want to consider is, you know, what was it a waste of money? Do we really need Alaska? Like what, what benefit does Alaska provide to us today? Um, but also the element of, um, can you imagine if Russia currently controlled Alaska? Um, so maybe even though it was 150 years ago, was it a good decision um, to buy Alaska from the Russians just so that the Russians don't have Alaska? So anyway, there's just a couple of things to think about when it comes to the U.S. purchase of Alaska. Um, I promise all the videos won't be this long, um, just the first one. So thank you for watching. And as always, feel free to email me with any questions.